Hey, hey, listen, I got a fire. I'm trying to put it out with a fire extinguisher, but the smoke okay, is what's on, what is on fire? I don't know. It's in, it's in my back office. Okay, I've got some help on the way. Uh, 2214 East Washington. Hurry. What you need to do is get out of the structure. There's a lot of smoke in here right now. You need to get out of the structure. We're on the way. Okay. Rescue 16 to alarm. Rescue 16. On the scene of a large warehouse, we have a working fire. Uh, this uh, this balances out to a first alarm. Passing command and the next driving unit. Copy your on scene of a large warehouse working fire. You want to balance the first alarm, you're passing command to the next driving unit. Coming over the bridge there, 20th Street. Uh, once we get down to uh, Jefferson there, we notice there was smoke showing. Uh, as soon as we pulled down right into Jefferson, you can see it started to vent itself. Um, I, right away I said it's going, it's, I told Angie it's going. We're going to need to call for some, you know, some help. I said we, uh, Rescue 16 is on the scene, so I pulled up. I told me we have a large warehouse, we have a working fire. Uh, give me the balance of a first alarm. I passed command to the next arriving engine company, which was 11. The initial report came in and we had a two in one assignment to uh, structure fire. We pulled out of the station. Uh, we didn't see any smoke right away. We turned south on 24th Street. Uh, I'm on engine 11. We were running in with engine 16 and rescue 16. As we turned south on 24th Street, we looked over here and saw a pretty black column of smoke. I turned and told my crew that we were going to have a working fire. We we're probably going to take in a big line. At that time, uh, Rescue 16 reporter on the scene. They said that they do have heavy smoke conditions and they balanced it out to a first alarm. It's on the scene. Larry gave his report. We had an obvious working fire vanning through the roof. Um, Engine 11 pulled up and uh, Captain Major asked us to assist his crew in getting inside and uh, helping them with the knockdown. I took command from them. There was no real assignments that they made. We went ahead. I, I gave the report that we were going to go ahead and lay in. I told my crew to take a two-inch line in. At that time, uh, Ladder 11 came in behind us. I told Ladder 11 to go to the uh, west side of the building. Kachina Boats is over there. I knew they had a high dollar loss. If, uh, if it was going to go extremely defensive, to go ahead and set up the ladder pipe. I went in with uh, Rescue 16, my crew, and also Rescue 11. We made a uh, basically a two-prong attack with uh, two lines, one directly to the west, and one cutting off the building halfway and then also to the west. Ladder left from the scene, give me a par. What do you want, Jerry? Have a par, go ahead and set up for a defensive position, please. Defensive spot. Command ladder 11. Ladder 11. Kind of set up on the west side of this building, please. West side, got you. Go to the west and put up the stick. Protect the west exposure. We had a boat company over here, Kachina Boat Company. So we had to force entry in there and some boats in the way. We had to get the gate unlocked, pull the gate back, and actually hand move some boats out of the way to get the ladder in off the road so we could put the stick By the way, I, I got with command, which was uh, Gary on engine 11. I told him, we're here. What do you need us to do for you? He said, back my crew up. Uh, we grabbed the tools that we have on our rig. We backed up the crew. Uh, as soon as we mashed up and went in, uh, we, just, we backed up their crew and found heavy, heavy smoke, heavy fire condition. Major, yeah, our major concern was the exposure on the west side. It was a Kachina boat. We had quite a few boats along the edge. We had some mold, molding over there. I guess it's fiberglass molds up against the building that was burning. So we want to get a line on that before we get it. We uh, used a metal blade saw and cut this chain link fence in two so we could take a extended two and a half over there with a gated Y. We did a horizontal standpipe. Ran one line in to protect the building and the boats, and then I went back and got a second uh, high-rise pack hooked onto it, and I grabbed the gentleman there at the, the boat company, the civilians, and had them operate a line for a while on their own boat to protect their boat until we got some more firefighters on the boat. Engine 16 is east. See if they can maybe help the ladder 11 get ready to set up the ladder pipe, and then we'll go ahead and pump the ladder 11. That's the real arm, dude. Let's stop it. Oh, 
because of uh, the, the report to me of hazardous chemicals and also uh, electrical lines possibly down the back side of the building, which I knew possibly ladder 11 was heading in that direction. Okay, you want to come in? Okay, you're on your interior now. Okay, I'll assume command, you go ahead and take interior. Ladder 1 responding. Ladder 1 responding. Uh, alarm copies command. Battalion 1 assume command. Washington Command, we have hazmat for an engine for responding. Do you need any other units? Yeah, let's go ahead and put in second alarm on this. Copy, second alarm. The first I got on the way in was that they uh, they were on the scene that they had heavy fire in a warehouse type structure that uh, they were laying a line in. They uh, set, Gary had set it up for me originally on engine 11. He had set it up uh, real good for me to, as a good base for me to start from when I took command from him. When I pulled up, he was ready to go to the interior, and I assigned him interior, and he went on inside. He had uh, he had pumped water already. He had ladder pipes already getting set up, and with the uh, thought of going defensive on this thing because of the fire load that he had had. In As we got inside the building, we had heavy explosions, one right after another. We thought there might be cars in there. There's a tires explosion. We then got another report that that's where where the fire was coming from was most of the uh, where the explosions were also coming from. I couldn't tell what they really were. Uh, the fire started to really heat up. We uh, went to a semi-fog pattern uh, to protect the, to kind of keep the heat off our backs. I looked up, we had heavy uh, fire rolling over our heads. We kept trying to advance. It looked like there was a, uh, a grease pit back there. It wasn't, it was just fire was all the way from the ground about to the ceiling rolling over our heads. So okay, we suited up, we went in there and uh went to work and uh, while we were in there try to get this door open so we can have more better visibility and uh, we accomplished that but uh, we still had you know heavy fire conditions every smoke. I, I truly believe after, after we opened up the big double doors uh, rescue 16 opened up the big overhead door between uh, the oxygen that was being fed in that way and us uh, pushing a lot of uh, oxygen with our semi-fog pattern that probably accelerated the fire to a certain degree. We kept trying to advance. At that time, I still had command. Battalion 1 arrived on the scene, and uh, he took command from me. We were still trying to push into the fire. At that time, uh, Engine 16's crew met up with us. I told Bob that I thought or right after, uh, right before Bob, uh, Bob Gomez off of 16, I discussed it with him. I said, I'm going to make the decision to go ahead and ban the building. We had heavy fire coming out of that west end. We had the roof coming in on that west end and the bond beam, which is the top course on that, uh, it's a masonry building, and the bond beam did crack to the east of where the crews had gone in. So I was afraid we were going to start losing that roof to the east of them also, and that would have made the entire roof collapse down there, and, and the stability of the walls was starting to become suspect also. So it, it was time to go defensive on it and go ahead and come on out and... Uh, come in. Okay, we're going to abandon and go defensive on this thing. on the fire ground, all units on the fire ground, abandon the building, you are going defensive. Once he got to the interior, he started, uh, he became involved with the tasks on the inside, he was fighting fire, some heavy fire on the inside, and uh, I was starting to get some bad reports. We could see things happening to the building on the outside that uh, the interior couldn't see. He gave me, initially gave me a report that he was uh, going to abandon the building because of the fire inside and they weren't making any headway on it. Uh, just about that time, 
he figured he was making a little headway, but he couldn't see the outside. Shortly after I made a decision to abandon the building, we had a partial roof collapse. Which if you pan right inside that double door, that's what collapsed. That's basically where we were at. We pulled back. We didn't think it was going to collapse anymore, but as I got out, they made the uh, statement that this wall was starting to bow also. I went, I went to emergency traffic tried to get everybody outside of the building and I uh, was not getting any response from the crews on the interior. The, uh, I was afraid at that time I had engine 11, engine 16, rescue 11, and rescue 16 operating on the interior of that building I had contact with none of them. So at that point I figured I had lost 12 people or at least lost contact with them. That's when I started the RIC teams going in. Washington Command Line, we will be operating defensive mode. Copy, you will be operating defensive mode. Commander Interior, give me a par. Command to Engine 11, Interior. Command to Engine 11, Interior. Command to 16. I was third engine in, I was asked to lay a supply line to the ladder pipe, ladder 11, and then I was signed as a RIC team. It could be a pretty boring position, you end up standing around watching everybody else work normally, but in this instance he couldn't account for some crews, so we were assigned as a rapid intervention crew right away to go inside and find teams that he couldn't get a hold of. The RIC teams, uh, they, they saw their role right away, they knew what they were doing. I had uh, tried numerous times to, to uh, get in touch with the interior crews and I wasn't getting no reply. So I had assumed, it, naturally I had to assume that somebody was down on the inside so we went ahead and assigned the RICs and they were going on the way in at the time that uh, they did make contact with them and everybody did get out. We were in the building probably anywhere between seven to nine minutes and uh, that's when the, the roof did collapse. Uh, it collapsed right after I gave the command to go ahead and abandon. So I might have been a, a foreteller of fortunes at that time. Also, at the time of the collapse, uh, there was emergency traffic that was given by command to abandon the building. Uh, they were unable to get a hold of us. I tried to get my crew together, making sure that we had a par, and there was some confusion where there was a RIC crew that didn't come in. And I was happy to see the RIC crew due to the fact that we were kind of in a in a very ten untenable position to pull everybody out with just me alone. When I got here, the building was in the process of collapsing. The roof was collapsing. Major concerns were the people, uh, I believe it was engine 16 and engine 11, they were the first crews on the scene. We were concerned about uh, whether they had a par or not, and that was our first objective, is to make sure they were out of the building before we proceeded any further. Yeah, there was concern for the crews inside. Uh, he didn't get any contact from them, so I was assigned to go in and get uh, pars from the crews inside. There was a, a two engines and a rescue inside. That's uh, 10 people, so he hadn't got pars for them and hadn't got any radio contact, so we were assigned to go in and get pars and get them out of the building. And how'd that go? Pretty smooth? Fine. Fine, it just took a couple minutes. They were, they were close enough to the front door where we could still see them inside, but we couldn't account for every head, so we had to get them all out. Come on. Be advised, we have a, a par on engine 11 and engine 16. Okay, we have rescue 16, rescue 11 also. Okay, we have a part in our units that were on the interior. That's a They came out on the outside. Okay, command alarm. We do have a part on the fire ground. We're going to start defensive operations at this time. Let's go, ladder 11. Uh, yes, I come over here and met with uh, the captain on engine 8, uh, Charlie Dote. And uh, he was the RIC team on, uh, on site and uh, confirmed with him where they were. They weren't out at that time. We waited a few seconds, did a couple of looks, and uh, they were 
uh, exiting the building at that time, and we did have a car of 16, 11, and both rescues that went in with them. Yeah, after a while, once we were in there, we had another engine crew come in and actually advise us, you know, that we needed to pull back and go go defensive. And it was tough to do because, you know, it felt like we had a handle on it, but, you know, I guess it was just, it was just going to the point where the roof was going to come down and they didn't want to take any chances. Let, you know, people behind me letting me know that we needed to get out and I needed to let Gary, you know, major in front of me, let them know that we needed to get out because the building was going to come down and it was starting to collapse. The roof was kind of caving in. And so we pulled out and started pulling the hand lines out. At, that, at the point when I was sending them people in, the building was uh, iffy. It, it was a marginal point right there. And uh, what we were doing was just putting eight more people in jeopardy because I did assign two companies as a rick to go in to try to find 12 people. Uh, probably within two minutes. They started locating people, bringing them out, and the, the, once we got the word from the rick teams inside that uh, they were abandoning the building, finally that they did get that not notification, they started coming out and started giving me PARs. The only ones that we finally uh, had to get a PAR from were uh, Rescue 11 and Rescue 16 that went on another door. And uh, that's another thing that the interior crews have to realize when they're assigned to a sector, they have to go in and come out at the same place. Because that, that's just another way that we're going to lose crews on the fire scene. When we, we have to commit people to the inside to look for them, and they're already outside. The system reacted real well. The, the crews that I had signed to Rick uh, knew their functions, knew their jobs, ready to go. They, they jumped right to it. They went right to the door. They were ready to go inside. They had lines they were ready to go in and pull out, start pulling people out. Yes, once, once they told me that they were starting to come out and they did, everybody was accounted for, then we went ahead and got the ladder pipe started and uh, put the fire out. That's basically what happened with it. Now, after the building collapsed, were there still people going inside? Was that a hard thing to manage, just the, keeping them out of there? Negative. Uh, they stayed out. Uh, we went a uh, defensive uh, command indicated as soon as we got a par, he uh, went defensive. He did a, a, a emergency traffic. We went defensive and started the pipes. The pipes did not start operating until we got a full par on the exterior of the building. They got out of the building when they needed to. They tried to make an aggressive interior attack and found that they couldn't do so. It was too much involvement with what uh, little uh, time and, and water they had at the time. And, and I think they all assembled and got a par real quick and I think they got a good defensive knockdown. Yeah, once they got set up and they pulled out of the interior, we had uh, we got to go ahead to go ahead and shoot the put up the stick. It was a pretty good stop. As much fire was going when we got here, it was a lot of fire. It's, uh, the wind was a big factor. It was blowing pretty heavy coming out of the west. So did that affect your master stream? It, yeah, we definitely did. It took a while to get a good stream up there. We actually we lowered the stick a little bit because it's just breaking up so much. So we had to get lower. You're using a fog nozzle? Yes. But you were close enough where that really wasn't it worked, a factor? It wasn't a factor. We did lower the stick a little bit. Initially, it was a little bit on the high side, and we just lowered the stick in, and it was very good and effective then. Yeah, the ladder pipes, uh, ladder 11 was already, uh, had water to it, up and ready to go. We just wanted to make sure we had everybody accounted for before we started any ladder pipes in operation. The entire structure, I was not going to uh, have ladder pipes working up on top with that roof coming in, that bomb beam looking the way it was. I wasn't going to start having walls coming in inside of there and anybody on the inside. Once, once the fire was knocked down and we were able to get back inside, do the overhaul, get the loss control started, cover up his engines and stuff like that that he had, uh, the real important stuff that he had conveyed to us that was important, we went ahead and got all that stuff covered up and we, we kept the loss minimal for that. For, for def defensive fire, they did a real good job as far as stopping it. And we checked on the interior. Uh, uh, with a couple of myself and a couple of other captains went in to assure uh, that we could go on the, the interior and do a knockdown. Most of the fire was put out by the ladder pipes. No, just backed up the system and went in tight. Did uh, lost a stop in there, helped cover up some machinery. We got quite a bit of machinery on the east side of the building and we uh, covered up with plastic. The thing that uh, the lessons learned on this thing was that uh, when assigned a sector, we have to separate ourselves from the task portion of that and watch the sector. Watch the sector and keep in constant radio contact with command.